I don't know how much damage this is going to do, to be brutally honest, because I'm too lazy to count it, but... Alright, we did it! What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code ITRESOLVES10YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to some more standard MTG gameplay. I'm very excited to jump into today's deck. Before we do though, just as a quick reminder, if you are not already, please make sure you subscribe. It really would mean a lot to us. Any and all support is greatly appreciated. Uh, it really does help us. Uh, the small time channels like us, it really does mean a lot. So like, subscribe, do all the stuff. Anyway, let's talk about today's deck, guys. It is at its heart a Demir control list. So the idea uh, is that we're going to do our best to control the game using a lot of point and click removal, things like Blood Chief's Thirst. We've got Power Word Kill, Flunk. Uh, or excuse me, Hagra Mauling, uh, Soul Shatter is in here, and then at the very top we do have the Sweeper Shadows Verdict. Now, we do have Shadows Verdict, not a different Sweeper for a very good reason. We want to hit mana values three or less. The reason being is Leer is a very key card to how this deck actually operates. Now, if you don't know what Leer is, Disciple of the Drowned, it's a 3-4 for 5. Uh, it says spells can't be countered, and each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard has flashback. That flashback cost is equal to its mana cost. So the idea uh, is that we get tons of replayability out of everything in our graveyard, which is essentially most of our deck. I mean, as you can tell, the only non-instant or sorcery cards in here uh, are basically Leer or the Celestis. Celestis is a nice way to gain a little bit of life, draw some cards, uh, and uh, ramp you actually as well. Uh, but you'll notice the rest of the deck is essentially just a bunch of bounce stuff a little bit of discard We've got fading hope you've got you see the guard approach uh, The approach here is actually a great way to protect Lear. Uh, you can use the hide side of it to give it hexproof, which is great uh, Devour intellect a great way to discard cards from the opponent's hand uh, Especially if we use something like fading hope to bounce something we can then devour intellect get it out of the hand It's essentially a removal spell uh, now you might be wondering how we actually win the game. Obviously attacking with Leer is an option. It's a relatively slow option, but it is one. Uh, but we do have, of course, a couple of man lands. Hall of the Storm Giants as well as Hive of the Eye Tyrant are both in here. Uh, and we do have Field of Ruin to kind of deal with the opposing uh, man lands as needed too. So it's an interesting list, I will say. There are a lot of different versions of this that I've been seeing floating around the ladder since I've gotten back. Uh, from my uh, couple weeks hiatus, uh, but I'm really curious to see how this one goes. One other thing I forgot to mention, we do have uh, the full learn ability thanks to divide by zero here. Uh, obviously, we do get to replay these obviously with Leer out uh, is the idea. So we can learn and get some nice little uh, game enders like mascot exhibition out from the uh, sideboard. So we'll see how it goes, guys. It should be a really fun time. Let's go ahead. Let's jump into game one. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. Uh, and this isn't a perfect hand, but it is one that I think we're going to try and keep here. The double Leer is not necessarily great. We also have the tapped lands here, but what we're able to do is hopefully get Jawari Disruption down turn two to counter just kind of anything. And then we'll have obviously a Fading Hope available. Wow, Leer number three, not a great draw, <laughs> uh, if I'm honest, but that is okay. Uh, let's see what we end up hitting here. Uh, hopefully we can actually counter something. If we can't, that's fine too. Uh, luckily we do play mostly at instant speed, so it's not a huge, uh, disruption puns, uh, to, to just be able to pass here. <laughs> oh, that was terrible. Um, all right. Looks like the opponent might be on a very similar style list. I think what I'm going to do is to go ahead and play the disruption out here uh, as the land. I don't really think we're going to need to to counter anything on two here, but we'll see. We will see. Uh, looks like an Esper control style list. Uh, very interested to see what this ends up being, actually. Um, unfortunately, no land there for us. They're still not doing anything either. They're just kind of... Uh, interesting. Um, I think what we'll do is let's go ahead and blow up the hall. This is just a way that we can get this out of here early, uh, and we don't really have to worry about it late game. That is a, a game ender at some point, so let's just be safe. I'll get a blue, uh, 
I think that's probably the best bet. Um, <laughs> and again, no land. Uh, I'm just going to make them discard a card. Uh, if they counter it, they counter it. It's not the end of the world. Um, we will see. Uh, this is the kind of spell that doesn't really matter if it gets countered. Um, but it didn't. Okay, so they're probably on an Esper version of the same list. Uh, if they're running things like Flunk, uh, that that and that and basically tells us that they probably run a lot of Bounce Magic. Uh, things like Fading Hope and Divide by Zero. Uh, and so I'm very curious to see how this ends up actually playing out. They have obviously gotten ahead on land, so chances are they will win this game. Uh, but it is what it is. All right, they've got Main Deck Disdainful Stroke. Very solid, honestly. Uh, makes a lot of sense. Uh, also, guys, Crimson Valve Preview, I believe, starts today. Wow, we are getting very unlucky with lands here. Um, and unfortunately, we're going to have to discard a card. I mean, we discard a Leer. We've got so many of them. Um, yeah, Crimson Valve Preview. I mean, we're obviously getting a big uh, hit. For Dude, this is insane. Uh, I can't believe we are just not hitting land to this extent. Like, this is pretty bad. Um, <laughs> there's a Celestis. It's going to get countered, I assume. Um, I mean, we're, we're, we we got to play it out, but like chances are I think we're just going to die here. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, Crimson Val stuff is going to probably start up today. I believe uh, Wizards is posting their little live stream for it today. Dude, this is ridiculous, um, which is great. I'm really excited to see what we're actually going to end up getting. I did kind of play around with the idea of doing kind of a preview video or a teaser video of things that I think, maybe a predictions video is the best way to describe it, uh, but of things that I think might be in the set um, or just some exciting things that I'm hoping are in the set at the very least. Uh, and I might still do that, I don't know. Uh, we're probably gonna get a lot of information today, so I don't wanna push too much, um, but I am very curious to see what happens uh, with this set. I think it's gonna be a really interesting one. If this gets countered, we might just concede. At this point, like, we're yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and concede here. There's no reason to to prolong the agony anymore. So <laughs> let's jump into our next game. All right, guys. Here we are for game number two. And I mean, this is a keep. It's not. It's a little land heavy, funny enough. Uh, but it is a, a a definite keep here. And we'll uh we'll run with it. We'll see how this goes. Uh. For X is seven minus the number of cards in the controller's hand. That's helpful to remember. Uh, okay, so Selesnia, good stuff potentially. Uh, very curious. All right, let's throw out a blue. We'll see what the opponent uh, ends up playing here. All right, Selesnia, life gain. Do we want to just kill that? Um, I think we do. Uh, that kind of turns off the clear it class here, uh, which I think is worthwhile. Um, that's not bad. We'll see if Dwari Disruption actually can hit something this time. That'd be really, really nice. Uh, that's not going to get hit, uh, unfortunately. There's a double Dwari Disruption. Okay, well, I mean, we just play and pass. Um, next turn we do have Leer that can come down, which is kind of nice. Um, so we Disrupt once. I assume they just pay. And then we do it again. <laughs> um, might as well. I mean, it's a two for one on to their advantage, but that's a pretty big spell to to get off the field here. That's a, a strong one, so I don't particularly want to lose out to that. Let's go ahead and get Leer down. Now we have all these awesome spells uh, available to us once again. Um, Flunk could be quite good here if we can get it down. We'll see. Uh, yeah, okay. All right, uh, well, I mean, first things first, let's go ahead and flunk this. Just gonna get that out of there, and we will, I think, go ahead and play the Devour Intellect from the graveyard just to get a card out of the hand here. Um, now, this is going to be a bit scary, but um, we might be able to play around it. They don't seem to have a ton of things at the moment, uh, which is helpful. Uh, obviously, not gonna be able to really counter that, so we're just gonna leave it. All right, um, well, this is perfect. So we actually get to do this, uh, then Devour Intellect. 
uh, which is going to get that last card out of hand. Perfect. That's very, very good, actually. The fact that we got the learn card out of their hand is pretty crucial, um, solely for the fact that they don't get an extra card off of it. Obviously, that's a way that they can get extra cards, and they, they now can't. Uh, thankfully, um, yes. Oh, it can't be countered. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, that's actually not the worst thing in the world. That's kind of fine. Um, that's really funny that <laughs> you forget about little interactions like that, but that's okay. Um, all right. Interesting. Uh, I mean, we definitely are just going to do this. This does not, uh, kill that. So that is pretty crucial to remember. Let's go ahead and get this last card out of hand again. Mine as well. Uh, and we'll attack in. I very much wish we could play this on the land side here, but we just can't. Um, all right. Another Jawari disruption here. Obviously, let's let's learn from our mistake and let's just play it out as a land. <laughs> uh, and we'll just pass. Now, this is the slow grind. This gives the opponent quite a bit of time. If they have anything that they draw off the top, they're going to be able to play it. So we do have to kind of keep things in mind here. We do have a backup Leer, which is quite nice, but... Uh, as well as the power word kill, which is pretty good. Uh, but we do have to worry a little bit here about what they could draw. Um, let's go ahead and kill this. Uh, before it gets the counter on it. Um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and kill this as well. No reason really not to. I mean, they get the 3-3, but we actually can fight through that 3-3, so I'm not terribly concerned about that. Let's go ahead and attack in here. This does not have lifelink, which is pretty crucial. Um, and uh, unfortunately, through all of this, we're still in a position where we're not winning the game. Uh, we are actually, like, with this life gain strategy against us, it makes it quite difficult to push through this damage. If we had a Hall of the Storm Giants, something like that, which we do have two of in the deck, uh, we'd be able to hopefully finish this off a lot sooner, but... We're giving the opponent quite a bit of time here, and we don't have a whole lot that we can do about it. So we're kind of just in a position of hopefully we can get something good off the top. Um, but unfortunately, we're not there yet. Uh, see, unfortunately, these are angels, so this doesn't fight through. Uh, so unfortunately, we just have to pass, uh, which is not great for us, but it is what it is. We got to do it. Uh, power word kill really not working against the angel deck, obviously. Um, let's go ahead and kill it before it really becomes a, uh, a problem. Um, and I, I mean, I'm just going to go ahead and kill this as well. There's no reason really not to. They can start attacking in pretty safely here. Yeah. All right. Um, I mean, I do think we're, we'll deck thin a little bit. Um, it's not great, but it hopefully is going to get us closer to just kind of anything. Uh, a Shadow's Verdict would be good. Memory uh, Deluge would be quite good. Um, obviously not going to be able to attack here. We'll see what happens. I mean, we do have outs. Let me be very clear in saying we definitely have outs, but um, we're just not really getting there yet. Uh, Shadow's Verdict would sweep the board, um, as well as Exile quite a bit from their graveyard. <laughs> Okay, uh, that definitely helps. So, um, let's see. It does have to be spell a permanent mana value one or more. That makes sense. Um, let's see. Uh, let's bounce this. They invested a lot of mana into that, so that seems kind of worth it. Um, it might be Prophecy. I feel like we really need to go for the Shadows Verdict here. Um, yeah, I'm going to do this. Uh, let's see. Flunk. Flunk's not bad. So I will take the Flunk. That does get rid of one of these angels here. It's not 100% great, but it's something. Uh, and then we obviously can get rid of the other one at some point. Uh, and we do get to replay all of these, which is great. So... We will see, we will see. Um, 
Looks like they might just be investing mana into these. Oh no, they're going to cram session. Okay. You got it. Uh, I wish we could divide by zero, but I did not leave up mana to do so. All right. Woo. I just dropped my... I was playing with my little guitar uh, thing. Oh, perfect. Perfect, perfect. All right. Well, this really solves our problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's just do this. Exiles a number of things from their graveyard. Uh, I think what we'll probably do is just leave up... Uh, maybe. Well, let's attack in first. Um, this is a very long game. This is kind of funny. Um, do I want to... Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and introduction to... Oh. Um, I think we'll take one of those. I don't think we'll use both, but that does give us a way to deal with the token with tokens, I should say, without killing anything. Uh, this is really an, a, a problem card for us, but we're going to gain some life. That's fine. Uh, we just get to Shadow's Verdict again. So really, all this doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, we're just going to do it. Perfect. Um... And I think we just leave up, like, the divide by zero this time. I mean, obviously, there's nothing super proactive that we can do anyway, so perfect. All right, so they're just going to level these guys up. That's fine. Uh, let's bounce that. All right, cool. Um, and we'll take the mascot exhibition. So that keeps them from getting a creature on the battlefield. This also gets us our win conditions. So now... We're in a much better place, theoretically. Uh, let's go ahead and exhibition. Uh, we do get to leave up the Fading Hope, as well as you see a guard approach. And now we've got a lot more power on the field. Again, we can replay the mascot exhibition next turn, so theoretically we might be able to do something here. Um, cool. That's fine. Uh, okay. Let's go ahead and, um, truth be told, we don't actually have to flunk it. We can just bounce it. <laughs> um, perfect. So let's keep that. No reason not to. Uh, and let's attack in for a crap ton. And let's mascot exhibition again. So again, we're just, this is the goal of the deck. It took us a long time to get here, but you can see how powerful this is once you get it going. Uh, this is obviously a very long game in terms of, you know, how long it took us to get here, but it's fine. I mean, we're we're fine. Uh, chances are they will be able to gain some amount of life this turn. Uh, unfortunately, we can't do much about this. They're going to get the creature back, uh, but it might be a little too late. Um, I wish we could play that, but we can't. Um... Let's go ahead and bounce this. Uh, they do get the 4-1, but uh, we do get to bounce that now, and they can't replay it this turn, which is quite nice. Um, all right, cool. So this is the turn where we should be able to essentially just get rid of everything. So let's get rid of this. Uh, let's get rid of this. Um, and I guess we'll go ahead and Blood Chief's Thirst on the wolf as well. I don't know how much damage this is going to do, to be brutally honest, because I'm too lazy to count it, but... All right, we did it! Thank goodness. All right, that was a very long game, but you did get to see exactly how this deck works, and that was perfect. So we're going to jump into one final game. I think we've got time for one more. We'll see how it goes. All right, guys, here we are for what will probably be our last game. Uh, and I think we can keep this. It's a little lackluster on the land front for sure, but we do have the divide by zero. So if we get one more land, we can actually learn into environmental sciences and kind of do our thing. We also have the fading hope, uh, which potentially later on could provide us with uh, a scry towards a land or something like that. Now I am going to leave it up here just in case. Uh, looks like mono red is going to be the play. Um, okay. 
I'm gonna leave it. Uh, we're not gonna do anything there now. Uh, and truth be told, I just hope we draw a land. If we draw a land, we're okay because we've got so many divide by zeros. Um, but we will see. Um, I don't think I'm gonna. I'm gonna let this hit. One damage in the grand scheme of things doesn't seem like the end of the world. I'd much rather kind of hold off and see what we can get. I'm going to play this for the mana side because we do have to kind of keep moving forward on that. Um, it would be a little worrisome to not be able to do that. So I think it's worth it just to, to go ahead and throw this down. We'll see what the opponent wants to do. Nothing on turn two for a mono red goblin deck. Uh, I assume this is the goblin deck is a little bit interesting normally you would expect to see something so very curious to see what they end up having um turn three is always a bit scary the hobgoblin is really the scary card in this deck i get so annoyed by seeing that card because it's so good um but it is what it is all right they play the land opponent playing a little bit slowly here um and that's fine all right, cool. So we're just going to end up bouncing this. Um, obviously going to slow them down. We do get a scry off of that as well, which is quite nice. I think I'm going to throw the Celestis on the bottom as much as I really like that card. Don't get me wrong. It's a very good card, even in this matchup. I think we just need to hit lands here. Um, and unfortunately, we didn't get it. We do have Divide by Zero up, though. So when they go to replay the Relic Robber, which I assume is what they end up doing. Uh, no, they don't. OK. That's kind of okay. I don't particular. I mean, if that's what they want to do with their turn, that's kind of fine. Um, I think we do bounce it here. Uh, maybe it should have been the charger, actually, but that's fine. Uh, but we do get to learn. Um, and again, we just kind of have to get environmental sciences. We have to get land. Uh, I mean, there's no way around it. That's just the uh, inescapable truth. All right, cool. And there is a land. Uh, that's good. So the question becomes, do we want environmental sciences now? Uh, leaving up, you see a guard approach. Or do we just leave up the divide by zero or memory deluge? Um, I think I'm going to just pass and leave some stuff up here. This is where the Celestis is so good, by the way, or in these matchups where we just get to play pass. Um, and it is very, very good, but it is a bit slower. Uh, and so I did kind of want to be more proactive and bounce something or, you know, get something out of the way versus just playing a Celestis on the turn. Um, cause that really does open up the door for Relic Robber in particular to get down and hopefully on their end, at least do some damage. And I don't particularly want that to happen. <laughs> uh, let's put that back in their hand. Uh, let's also pull a card out of our sideboard here. Uh, and we'll see what we get. Um, it might be Introduction to Annihilation. Yeah, I'm going to pull that. That just gives us a long-term answer. Um, we're not... I mean, this is a deck where the individual power level of each card isn't necessarily super high, uh, but there's still plenty that we do have to kind of worry about here. So uh, one thing that we do need to get to is a Shadows Verdict. I would argue that in this list, we could have pushed the number of Shadows Verdicts uh, a little bit higher. I believe we only have two. Um, I would have liked to have seen maybe three. I think we could have pushed that a little further, given that we're on the best of one ladder at, in particular, because you do see a lot of these aggro heavy decks. Uh, and I think that that would have been quite useful. Uh, a Disruption. Don't think Disruption's really where we're wanting to be, so I'm going to throw that down. That's going to guarantee us Leer next turn, uh, if we would like it. And again, I think we just pass. Um, we also will have the introduction to Annihilation if we'd like it as well. So, uh, Opponent really playing pretty slowly. I know we're being a bit methodical as well, but I don't see them. Uh, they're definitely on the slower end of their play style, uh, which is fine. They might just be learning the deck, so we do have to be... Uh, understanding of that let's go ahead and divide by zero one more time again we're just filling up the graveyard with tons of fodder for the upcoming leer here uh it should be pretty good let's go ahead and uh introduction to prophecy uh that's quite good for us now we are going to take two here that's fine 
I'd rather take two than lose out to that Relic Robber. But this is potentially going to draw us into the Shadows Verdict, which is kind of the hope. Um, now the question is, do we just play the Leer out? Um, and I do think we can because we've got the you see the guard approach. You see a guard, a god approach. I can't. I can't say that. That's such a dumb name for a card. Um, but this is going to allow us to to theoretically kind of play some fun stuff in response here. So let's see what they do. Uh, they might try and kill it. They may have a way to kill it. I don't know. Um, but my hope is that we're able to get kind of a block down and maybe use the hexproof, the hide side of this to, to do something kind of fun. Uh, yes, that's fine. It's not fine, but it's not the end of the world. This is such an annoying card. <laughs> All right. Um, sure. They Well, let's see what they do. Interesting. OK. Um, hmm. Let's bounce the hobgoblin. Let's get that out of there. Ooh, there's a hall. Um, yeah, I think we keep that. That's just a really good card. And then let's kill the relic robber. Kind of surprised they attacked as they did. That seemed a little odd, um, but I'll take it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, now what do we want to do? Um, we've got divide by zero up twice over, which is probably just worth holding up as lot as well as the the hide version of this. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see. Eventually we get to bash in with the hall here, uh, which is theoretically going to be very good. Um, but as long as we can keep him off of activating this hobgoblin, we might be okay. Um, and truth be told, if we can get to that shadows verdict, we're in really, really good shape. Um, there's, I think very little they'd be able to do against that. Um, but we'll see. I think the opponent is definitely still learning the deck here because they this is I don't want to say an easier deck to pilot because goblins by no means is an easy deck. But I, I would suggest that it's a little bit more linear than most versions or most decks in the current meta. So very curious to see them kind of spend their time here, but that's totally fine. All right, we're going to bounce that hobgoblin. I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. Um, I think we just get mascot exhibition because we do have the mana to kind of go for that. Um, and that does slow them down quite a bit here. I mean, I like to think we're in pretty decent shape. But we'll see. Uh, this is also kind of a longer game, I think partially just because of the opponent kind of taking their time, uh, which again, totally fine. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have exactly enough for the mascot exhibition. See, this is an odd attack for me. Um, I'm going to throw the charger back as well. Um, and just pull another exhibition. We're just kind of setting ourselves up for his... Oh, that's very good. Um, okay, cool. So we're just going to throw this out. <laughs> uh, and I will attack in here. We do need to start dealing some damage, so we might as well go ahead and do that now. Uh, if they want to, you know, activate Faceless Haven, get a, a strong attack in, that's kind of okay. I'm happy to trade off these tokens, given that we've got so much we can do on the back end that it really doesn't matter, um, at least in my opinion. So I think we are stabilizing pretty strongly here. They do have a lot of mana. Um, so they might be able to do something pretty exciting here. Like, just play out a bunch of stuff, if that makes sense. And they do get a free turn as well, to be clear. Uh, they're going to drop that Hobgoblin, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh. All of this is fine. Uh, I am more than happy to trade some of these things off here, because these are essentially fodder for us now, given we've got so many other ways to deal with stuff. And this is perfect. So let's... Let's kill the Hobgoblin. I'm definitely just doing this now just to make this a lot easier, uh, to be honest. Um, let's, I think, 
Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just going to kill this little javelin here. That's not super exciting, I know, but that's kind of fine. Um, all right, let's attack, attack, and attack. We'll leave up the 3-2. Uh, we also have divide by zero available to us, so I'm not, not really concerned. We could also, I guess, just start blowing up more stuff. That might be the way to do it. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get the 3-3 three, three out of there. Uh, let's environmental sciences. This is just going to give us an extra land, but it's also going to give us a little extra life. Um, and now we get to leave up the the guard approach as well. So we can give something hexproof. We can tap something down. We've got options. Um, uh, I think it's fine to do this. I mean, if they just have another one, they can two for one it. I don't. It doesn't really matter. This is not really something I should be fighting over, to be fair. Um, so maybe this is the wrong play, but uh, I mean, I think it'll be OK. Um, <laughs> what this does, though, is keep us a reasonable blocker for that faceless haven, which they didn't activate. Um, sure, you get tons of little one ones. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, I'm only too happy to to block here. They can kill our 2-1 if they'd like. They can't target this. It has Hexproof. I think this opponent is definitely learning. Um, <laughs> which is fine by me. That is perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that. Um, Alright, let's do this. Let's uh, do this. What that does is that allows us to ensure that all of our creatures can attack in here. And while we might lose that 3-2, uh, it's not going to be the end of the world. Let's just do it. Let's attack in. Curious to see how they actually block here. That's it. Okay. Fine by me. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. I guess we could have also attacked with the hall, and that might have guaranteed lethal, but... I mean, at this point, <laughs> I'm not really worried about it. Um, sure. That's fine. Um, also fine. None of this matters. That's the great thing about all this. Um, definitely going to blow up the land. We'll blow up here and we'll take out one of these guys. We don't really need to, but we can, so... <laughs> All right, there we go. We got the win, guys. Awesome. Let's talk about this deck. All right, so uh, Demir Lear. What an interesting deck. Uh, I know it's a bit of a slow deck, so I apologize. I know these games are a little bit longer. Uh, at least the second two definitely were. But you really get to see the showcase of the deck. You get to see how it works. And it does play so much like a true control deck where you're... I mean, there are nuances that are very different. Excuse me, but... I think the the play pattern is very much the same where it's just control 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 get Lear out uh, all of a sudden nothing can be countered so against other control decks you have a bit of an edge uh, because some of their spells will be dead uh, and then ideally you just are able to slowly kind of grind your way through uh, your opponent's life total and get the win um, now sometimes it's harder than others we certainly saw against the life gain deck it was pretty tricky um, but we I mean we still got two wins we did pretty well with this one so I actually really like this. I know there's a couple different versions floating around the ladder. Uh, so we might try and play around with a different version later on. Uh, but guys, this was great. I love this deck. Uh, I think it's really, really fun. I highly recommend trying it, especially if you're a control player at heart. This is a really good starting point, I think, for standard right now. So please do check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. As a reminder, please make sure you subscribe if you are not already and like the video if you enjoyed it. Uh, but until next time, guys, we'll see you very soon for some more gameplay videos.